Reprise de Bar, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion tabled by the Member for Burnaby New Westminster. As my colleague, the Member for York South Weston, has clarified, the intent of this motion presently being debated is to empower the Speaker to address the breakdown in question period and consequently the continued erosion of respect for this place. Our concern with the lack of serious informative answers to questions is but one of a litany of concerns we have with the erosion of respectful debate in this place. For example, increasing omnibus bills allowing for very limited debate. Secondly, the tabling of significant bills, including amendments to criminal law by private government members with the consequence of limited debate. Also, as the member clarified, question period is in fact intended to be a one-way street. It is the time in this place where the opposition has provided specific time on the agenda to ask questions of the government of the day. And the reasonable expectation that government will provide timely, informed responses. So, Mr. Speaker, how have government members responded to this motion? Well, Mr. Speaker, by alleging that our motion is one-sided because it only talks about responses to questions and not the questions themselves. Incredulously, they've proffered that the opposition merely seeks to change question period to their own advantage. If this government cannot recall similar frustrations they faced while in opposition, perhaps they might give a care to a time in the future when even they are no longer the governing party. Government members have offered, also proffered that the Speaker has the current power to rule on the content of questions, but not of answers. Indeed, the Speaker confirmed this view in his ruling on January 28, 2014, yet added his support to principles laid down by previous speakers, including, and I quote, but the speaker must adhere to the long-standing principle that question period is intended to hold the government to account, end of quotations. The Minister for Western Economic Diversification has argued that granting a power of scrutiny to the speaker to command um, relevant response to questions is unnecessary as the standing rules were pre previously amended to allow for late shows. With all due respect, Mr. Speaker, and to this Minister, I can attest from personal experience that this opportunity has been reduced to a hollow right. The Ministers choose not to attend to respond, and in my experience, the responses have tended to be uninformative, despite the clear opportunity for the Minister to become better informed and respond at this later opportunity. Incredulously, the member for Regina Lumsden Lake Centre objected to addressing quote-unquote, one-off amendments to the standing orders. This, Mr. Speaker, from a member who has repeatedly defended the tabling by his party of one-off reforms to important statutes. He then went on to advise he is working on comprehensive changes to the standing rules. As the member for Toronto Danforth has pointed out, our party is more than enthusiastic to participate in an all-party, thorough review of the standing orders. But, Mr. Speaker, the question is, will this government undertake that, will undertake any or all such reforms? Um, will they be by unanimous consent, not imposed through government majority, has been their practice? Again, I reiterate, as the, the Minister has suggested, that the member from, uh, from uh, Lumsden, will his substantive review of the standing orders proceed with all parties? and be agreed on by unanimous consent. That's what's important. And it's important to consider that when uh, the OGO Committee tabled a close to unanimous list of recommendations for this government to reform the estimates and spending reviews in this place, the Minister rebuffed a good number of the recommendations which could have ushered in a more thorough, inclusive review process. Finally, a number of government members objected to the practice of opposition posing questions repeatedly on the same subject. Well, Mr. Speaker, wouldn't it be terrific if more ministers provided a fulsome response at the outset? I and my colleagues take very seriously our duties um, to both our constituents and, frankly, all Canadians to raise questions to the ministers of the Crown on critical matters, matters of great importance to Canadians. 
Far too often, often, members of Parliament raise questions in the House regarding failure by the government to respond to inquiries on behalf of constituents. What is regrettably the situation that has arisen in this place um, is that it has required the official opposition to bring forward a formal motion explicitly proposing a change to the House procedural rules to explicitly empower the Speaker to require relevant response to questions. The Minister of Western Economic Diversification has today expressed her preference for self-governance of behaviour by the Ministers in tailoring their response to questions. At least this is consistent with this government's policy on self-governance in all other ways. The Parliamentary Secretary for Justice complained that members of Parliament too often repeat the same question. Well, why is that? Because of the failure to respond to the prior questions. As my colleague, um, a previous colleague has clarified, this motion we're debating relates specifically to question period where the Prime Minister and his executive, or the Cabinet, has the responsibility to provide constructive responses to questions presented about matters impacting Canadians. It's important to consider this motion um, for expanded powers to the Speaker to intervene during question period um, are not untoward. The Speaker already has the recognized power to intervene during question period. For example, in response to a point of order made following question period, a point of order raising issues about the nature of the question or response, including use of unparliamentary language. Secondly, in practice, the Speaker from time to time intervenes immediately during the course of questions or even answers to seek clarified or better use of language. As laid out in the second edition, 2009, of O'Brien and Boss, Speaker Bosley in 2009, when addressing this very issue of guidelines for question period, called for recognition of four principles. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to reiterate one of those four principles, the third. While there may be other purposes and ambitions involved in question period, its primary purpose must be the seeking of information from the government and calling the government to account for its actions. Pretty clear. Mr. Speaker, I've long suggested to my constituents who have expressed frustration to me about the lack of credible cogent responses during question period that I may need to table a motion calling for a name change from question period to answer period. Now Mr. Speaker I used to think that this was an amusing concept but it's become the reality and I'm pleased that this motion is exactly addressing that issue. I'm hopeful that all the members in this place will recognize the seriousness of our motion and vote in favor to restore the credibility of this place in the minds of Canadians and to those elected to represent them. Thank you. Questions and comments? Question we come on tide. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Carlton Hills. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the uh, member opposite knows, I said that uh, I will be voting for the motion. I'm interested in her um, ideas, though, uh, regarding question period beyond just the issue of enforcing the irrelevancy and our petition rule. Uh, one of the things that I think um, would be helpful to the government one day, uh, the Conservatives will no longer be in government and it will be a different party, um, is to establish a rotational schedule for the First Minister and for other Ministers so that they don't have to attend to the House every single day of the week to answer questions. In the United Kingdom, the Prime Minister comes once a week for a full question period and other Ministers appear on a rotational schedule. One could be set up so that Ministers of the Crown appear twice a week on a rotational schedule. It would allow uh, members of Parliament who are interested in certain subject areas to attend uh, during certain days to ask very specific questions of specific Ministers and for the House as a whole to attend on Wednesdays to hear uh, the First Minister, the Prime Minister, respond to questions about the whole of government. I'd be interested to see her views on going to that sort of rotational schedule. The member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I appreciate that the member will support the motion. And uh, I appreciate the suggestions that the Honourable Member is making. I think that the time for that kind of discussion is during the time where the member from Lumsden, etc. I'm sorry, I don't remember the full name of his, his riding, um, has suggested that he is considering many changes to the standing orders. Uh, what we are hopeful is that, in fact, this will be done with all parties and that the changes will be unanimous or by, by consent of all parties. I think that's one of many proposals. Um, the concern I would have is um, sometimes these questions are urgent and that was one of the four principles that the question should deal with a matter that is urgent and so there should be flexibility when we raise those. 
the important thing is, is that the ministers in fact do stand and respond to the questions and that they in fact respond to the questions. Thank you. Questions and comments? Question I come on tide. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to pick up on uh, the member's uh, comments at the beginning when she talked about the er erosion of respect. Um, and that's, in fact, what we have uh, been witnessing. Uh, and when you think of a uh, question period uh, as a standalone issue, as this motion is suggesting that we, that we do, it is important that we point out we had one of the Conservative members make reference to the fact while it's difficult for the Speaker in a short time span to determine whether or not a question is repetitive or an answer is repetitive or uh, relevant type of thing. And I think that, uh, and I would ask for the to member to, to reinforce or to, to acknowledge uh, the fact that uh, quite often it does not take much, uh, a matter of seconds, where we can virtually determine that a, a minister in certain areas uh, is in fact completely uh, irrelevant to the question that has, uh, that has been put, posed. Uh, and, and we witnessed that uh, uh, last week on, on several occasions. It wasn't a, a question of having to, to wait till the question or the answer or the response was complete. Uh, we knew within 10 seconds of the response that it was the intent of the, the minister not to provide an answer uh, to, to the question. Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Um, well, Mr. Speaker, I'm not totally clear on the question that's being raised, but I certainly can attest to the fact of sharing the frustration of rarely, if ever, getting a genuine, uh, fulsome response to any of my questions. I am my colleagues, and colleagues, in fact, across the opposition, have been raising some very serious questions on serious matters, from uh, potential of engaging in war, to the rights of Canadian workers, to treatment of temporary foreign workers, to the health of Canadians, and to the protection of the environment. These are serious questions that we raise on behalf of our constituents and all Canadians. So it's incumbent upon the, the ministers to respond seriously to those questions. Um, as we have been reminded by previous speakers, Canadians are watching, and this further, the, the failure to give respect to those questions further erodes their confidence in the role of elected officials. So we encourage that all members support this motion and, and proceed with making whatever uh, reforms are necessary. It would be nice if they self-govern, but they've shown in their time of office that they're simply not self-governing in the public interest.